You probably thought at this point that I wasn't going to review this album, but I'm a sneaky, sneaky boy. I'll be honest in saying that there have been a few releases lately that I haven't really got the feeling of on first listen. And I think this year, more than previous years, there's been more albums like that. Usually it takes maybe two, three, four at the most listens for me to really understand how I feel about an album. Um, not to say that I would review an album only after like those amount of listens, it's not the same for everyone, it depends on the release. But there have been some that I've just been trying to sit with a bit longer because I feel like immediately I'm not getting a sense for what they are offering. And I don't want to just dismiss things and just, you know, throw it away and never go back to it ever again because that's not the kind of music listener that I am. So Lingua Ignota gave me one of those kinds of albums this year. Sinners Get Ready is the third album from Lingua Ignota. It is the most different album that she has given us so far. She was giving us more screaming kind of heavier vocal albums in the past that had a bit more of like a metal direction, although I wouldn't necessarily say they went full on metal. I do think All Bitches Die is really good. Definitely an album that I think has been one that, you know, again, took a bit of time to get used to, but I actually really appreciate what she was giving us on that one. But it was in fact her 2019 album that almost lost me with Lingua. I just couldn't quite stomach the screams and the vocal approach that she took on that album. It was very, very uncomfortable. It was the, that was the point of the album. It was supposed to be uncomfortable but um, it just wasn't for me. This time around though, she's gone way more in a choral direction with the music here. This is bordering on like classical kind of stuff here, church music, chamber music. It is very stripped back and it is somehow the most harrowing album I think she's given us today. It's impressive actually that she doesn't necessarily have to go like the full growl with her voice. And yeah, I'm still scared when I hear her sing. She is very impressive at conjuring a, a, a haunting atmosphere in ways that there aren't really many other singers that I think could do this with this kind of music. I think usually you'd need a bit more of a heavy kind of approach to what you're doing. But the fact that she strips it all down and yet I'm still haunted listening to her is an achievement. Which is why I think it took as many listens as it did, because I think first time it didn't really impact me that much, second time I was sort of getting there but I still wasn't really that impressed, but by the time I hit like my fifth, sixth maybe listen, I was sucked in, like I was ready to drop. The Order of the Spiritual Virgins, which is not only a terrifying album, uh, track title, but is also a very haunting and ominous track with the church sounds that come through. It has a terrifying droney end as well. Oh my god, the way this track just kind of goes in that direction is so chilling. And the way she says, hide your children, hide your husbands, I think is pretty impressive because it's usually like, you know, hide the children, hide the, hide the women, hide the wives. But the way she flips it and it's like, she's the danger and it's the husbands that should be afraid of her. I thought that was pretty clever. The way she descends into madness on many hands is once again a, a, a crucifying moment. I really feel like that is just the devil kind of <laughs> reaching up into her and becoming her. Really like the I would die for you over and over again. I think that's incredibly impactful too. On I Who Bend the Tall Grasses um, is the first sign of any like vocal growls coming through and it is spine chilling, honestly. Like she doesn't go full like throttle with it, but she does it just enough to really add this really eerie feeling to the track because again the instrumental isn't really matching what she's doing with her voice but the the effect that she creates with that is absolutely unmatched take gold take hold of my golden axe and split him open what the hell man Holy shit, that line. Is this Cersei Lannister, you know, ordering people to get killed in Game of Thrones or something? Like, I feel like she's just on her throne telling people how things should be. And she ain't, she ain't taking no prisoners. She is absolutely axing 
every settlement that she comes across here. I don't give a fuck, kill him, you have to. Jesus Christ, man. I don't even know if I want to decipher the meaning of some of these tracks because I think it would just scare me even more if I read into what she is referring to with some of these songs. Seriously, I think it's one of those the less I know the better situations. Repent Now, Confess Now has this like jaggedy uh, guitar plucking which I think sounds really cool. It almost sounds like very old and traditional, almost like a very, you know, early blues song with how like, you know, some of those tracks were very lo-fi and they were recorded pretty terribly, but the effect was still there and you could definitely respect and appreciate what it was for its time. I feel like she's kind of going for that on this track. Perpetual Flame of Centralia is a moment that's incredibly minimal incredibly minimal. The piano keys on this one are very ethereal and just again the atmosphere that she's conjuring is very very mood inducing but there's just so little going on like yet you feel every moment. Do not underestimate the insanely beautiful piano playing though on Pennsylvania Furnace. The piano on this track is absolutely stunning. Some of the best piano playing I think I've heard all year and yet when you kind of break it down it sounds like a pretty simple sort of melody that's being played but there's just something about it that just really strikes me and takes me aback. Again I feel like this album is all about the feeling and I think you could just you know pinpoint some moments as just being pretty standard pretty you know minimal like I've already said I've already used that word not a lot is always going on but it's it's how the album makes you feel. It's how these moments really get you. And in that kind of claustrophobic setting, it really chills you. She repeats, I fear your voice, I fear your name. Incredibly uh, deep moment that has a pretty simple meaning to it. But I feel like that one line really um, holds a lot of power to it. She's made a lot of music throughout her career about abuse and experiencing abuse and I think when you take lines like this thinking about that context it just really adds a lot of weight to the words she's saying even if it's a very simple thing to say you know there's not a lot of things to decipher with the lyrics there it's pretty straightforward but the power I think behind it is very heavy. Absolutely adore the instrumental floating off on Man Is Like a Spring Flower. I've talked about how minimal this album is, but this is actually one of the moments where I feel like the effort being placed onto the melody is a bit heavier on this track than some of the other tracks. Like I say, often it's very ominous and often the focus is her voice, but I think this track actually does a great job at creating a great instrumental. Reminds me of the album Different Trains, which is a classical album from like the 70s, I think. It's a very old album at this point, but a very fantastic one. If you've never heard Different Trains, go check it out. But there's something about the melody here that's created that reminds me so much of that. Pairing that with her bird-like angelic vocals on this track too, yeah, this is a stunning moment as well. Solitary Brethren of Ephrata. Jesus Christ, man, even all of these tracks sound like they're from medieval times. Uh, this album is really like an isolated moment <laughs> that came from a different generation. Like, seriously. This track, once again, has some incredibly powerful lyrics. I may as well read them out to you, actually. I've got them written down. Uh, Ugly Ugliness is my home. Loneliness is my master. Loneliness is my master. What a way to word that. Holy shit. I bow to him alone, all I want to him alone. Like, wow. Wow. And the thing is, is that I haven't even touched on, like, 90% of the lyrics on this album. I could have just read out so many chunks of this, but... I feel like the impact is already there, you know what I mean? Like you don't necessarily need to read out every individual lyric because I think if you listen to this, you can catch those moments yourself. Pairing that with the music as well, this album is very daunting. I think it it's a, exactly the kind of album that took as long as it did to really click with me because it just makes sense. It makes sense that this album's been out like, what, six weeks at this point I'm on, and I'm only now reviewing it. Like, of course, that's this album. Of course, it had to be. But it's not going to be one that I'm going to have a lot of comfort in going back to. Like, I think it is a great album, but I think I'm going to have to be in a very particular mood to listen to something like this. But don't get me wrong, though. This is a great album and definitely one of the best musical experiences I've had this year. It's terrifying. It's stomach churning. And yet, if you 
<laughs> you know, break down individual tracks, you wouldn't even be able to pinpoint that many things going on instrumentally, but the impact is on another level. And I think Lingua Ignota right now is one of the most talented artists going. Like, she is absolutely fantastic. It's all about the feeling, I think, and that's what music has always been for me, the music that makes you feel a certain kind of way. And you're gonna feel something every time you listen to a Lingua Ignota album, even if you don't like it. Like I say, the 2019 album wasn't for me, but holy shit did I feel things listening to that. She gets the job done. Eight out of 10, really great stuff here. Like I say, one of the best albums I've heard this year. I'm glad I sat with it for as long as I did because it did take some time. It did take a lot of, <laughs> a lot of doing, but I got there and I really started to fully understand her vision with this and it's really, really good. So thank you for watching this review. Hopefully you agree with me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you don't agree with me, if you do agree with me. If you haven't subscribed as well, I would love to see you subscribe and be in the comments section more actively. Tell me your thoughts in the comments on this album. Have a good day and goodbye. Goodbye.